top fives, the show of everything. Top fives presented by the Sex Effects. I'm Joy Parati. And I'm Sean Day. And folks, uh, this evening we have a very uh, special episode. Um, if you're watching on Twitch, uh, you can probably already see the title of our episode. But Jonathan, I will I will let you uh, take it from here, my friend. Yeah, my uh, my grandpa uh, Anthony H Day uh, or Tony, as everyone knows him as, uh, passed away uh, last week, and um, you know, very. Uh, it's my grandpa on my dad's side um, in England, and you know, I found out last week that he passed away, passed away peacefully, which was really nice. And you know, he was every, with everyone. He was with my grandma, and my you know that side of my family. So um, it's been a definitely a hard week. Um, in the last few days, uh, but you know, I've been just checking in with my family and and just making sure everything's okay. Uh, my grandpa was such a you know, had such a grateful life being able to have that relationship with my grandpa, and uh, you know, he, he him and my grandma would visit almost every year, I think, from England. Um, so you know, I had a really good relationship with him, and you know, he's uh, I'm gonna miss him so much. And we're in. In fact, we're drinking Bushmills Irish whiskey tonight in his memory. And I think some of our top five lists for tonight are going to be kind of inspired uh, by my grandpa. So, um, but yeah, if um, if anyone wants to reach out, you know, my my family, Michael Day, Virginia Day, and also my grandma as well, um, Gloria Day, uh, definitely give them your condolences and. Um, it's been a tough one because the last time I saw my grandpa um, was last year when Joey and I went to uh, to England for our like little Euro trip. And it was so much, it was a lot of fun uh, as far as just being able to see my family, but also a very grateful um, time as far as just being able to sit there and just kind of talk with my grandpa and, uh, and just kind of share some memories and stuff. And as simple as just sitting down in their living room and, and, you know, sharing stories and, you know, just kind of hanging out, you know, I was really happy to get that time with my grandpa. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much for the show tonight. We're going to kind of do some, some top fives in his memory and, um, yeah. And I want to also thank anyone who has reached out to my family and, uh, and to myself as well. And, uh, it's going to be a, uh, obviously a hard time and especially with all the stuff that's happened this year. Um, but I know that his family loved him greatly and my grandpa is, is, it was such a good man. And, uh, you know, I, I would say I get my musical inspiration and, and kind of, I think the musical gene from him he used to be a jazz piano player. And, um, I used to love watching him play piano, uh, whenever he could. So a lot of good memories and, you know, I've been just talking with my family and just kind of, you know, sharing those memories and, and just trying to make, uh, make those memories last as they say. So. Beautifully said, sir. And cheers. To cheers to Grandpa Day. I had the privilege of uh, getting, you know, to know your grandfather, both your grandparents, your whole family. And it is is a privilege. Um, you know, my I was very close with my nan and she passed back in 04 and your grandparents have always, you know, jokingly, but really they did adopt me as, as you know, as one of their own and I've always been very thankful and and grateful for that. And, um, yeah, I loved your grandfather very much. He was a good man and, uh, we're going to miss him a lot, but thank you for letting me be a part of your family. I know, man, your whole, your whole family too, man. I think one of the the best memories I always have is especially when my grandparents were over was, uh, Easter Sundays at the parade. Those were good. Where we would have lots of food. We would hang out with your family uh, sing some songs. We would play a few songs for for my grandparents and, and your family, and um, I think that was kind of like one of my favorite memories uh, when they were over here. Uh, usually around that time in April. So yeah. Um, yeah, playing some Johnny Cash and all sorts of stuff. So <laughs> I I definitely uh, you know the the day you told me or the day that I found out I played uh, Long Black Veil because I, I remember that being his favorite um yeah 
man. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I, I, I we we talked. Joey mentioned earlier, um, you know, should we do a podcast tonight? And I was like, you know what, I think. I, I didn't know if it was going to be around my grandpa or not, but, you know, as of right now, you know, I'm glad we're doing this. And, you know, I think this is something we've been doing weekly and sometimes my, some of my family watches too. So, um, you know, I think this is uh, definitely um, an appropriate way to even send him off as far as just some of the things that we talk about tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to miss him very dearly. And um gonna be just uh closely talking with my family in the next few days um just for the kind of uh, funeral arrangements and everything and uh yeah just checking in with my my dad and and just the rest of my family and of course my grandma too as well so grandma if you're watching thank you for watching and um you know we we will miss grandpa very much <sighs> You know, I uh, it's been very cold over here, and um, so I've been in my bathrobe all day long, and it was it belonged to my nono, so it felt very. And I it was going to take it off for the show, and I thought, you know, this feels very apropos for tonight. So um, we're doing a show all all about you know grandfathers and and things that your grandfather liked. Which list, Jonathan? would would you like do or do you want to discuss some news do you want to pivot or do, yeah. we, do we want to put that on man. the tail end oh, man i don't know there's so many combinations that we could go let's do who let's do our list first and then yeah, sounds we'll get good some some of the other stuff that's been just brewing in 2020 man it's just been crazy. whoa um yes well sir would you like uh, to go first? Would you like I to go first? Uh, you go first, Joey. All right. Jonathan, um, in the spirit of remembering your grandfather, what are your top five favorite movie grandpas? And this was, I had to think about this one because there's not that many movies with like, uh, a, not. as a grandpa character, as being like kind of the highlighted character and, and kind of one of the supporting characters if in a way. Um, so I'm going to go number five. And I did watch this movie like quite recently, uh, maybe like two years. I mean, not recently, but two years ago. Um, it's uh, for number five, Grandpa Edwin uh, from Little Miss Sunshine in uh, 2006. Oh, yes. Uh, played by Alan Ur Is that Erkin? Erkin? Alan Arkin. 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 Um, what I mean, I, I love this movie. It was, it was a really nice movie, and the it's a sweet film, yeah. Sweet film, especially with the uh, the grandpa and his uh, and his granddaughter kind of relationship throughout the movie, and kind of the journey they have with each other. So um, it's a very memorable performance, and uh, yeah, I really I, I've seen Alan uh, Arkin in a lot of different films, and I think he fits this role perfectly. So I'm going to go number five, uh, Grandpa Edwin. Excellent. Uh, number four, this one is uh, from a movie that we quite enjoy and we t we've talked about, I think, a few times. It's Mr. John Hammond from uh, uh, Jurassic Park. Heck yes. Uh, played by Richard Attenborough. I mean, in the first movie, I wouldn't say he wasn't the most responsible grandpa <laughs> as far as getting Probably not. grandchildren <laughs> stuck in a amusement park full of, uh, you know, velociraptors and stuff. But um, I'd say that's a good call. There are there are good moments, though, where, you know, he he, uh, he especially when, you know, it's his this park is his creation and his kind of uh, I mean, there's that good moment where he, you know, he was talking about like a you know, he used to have like an ant circus and, you know, it was like fake and, you know, but he, he tried to convince people that there was, it was real and magic. And, you know, with this park, the thing that is so hard for him to let go is like, it's real. It's, it's, you know, it's a, you know, we're, we're, we have the ability to bring something back from the dead in a way. And um, when he realizes, you know, oh my gosh, you know, like my grandkids are in trouble and, you know, I've put, I put him in this like situation and you can kind of see, you know, that that kind of switch in him where he's like, you know, it's it's not about this park anymore. It's about, you know, your grandkids surviving and 
um, and you know, obviously getting to safety. So, um, but I, I I love his character in it. You know, he's such a he has such an elegance to him in a way, but also a mis- mysterious kind of side to mm. him. And mischievous. and mischievous like the first time we see him he's rummaging through the fridge like yoda in empire exactly you know like, what, is he, um, what is he doing <laughs> yeah kind of so, elfish yeah yeah so yeah john hammond jurassic park wonderful uh this one's kind of a deep cut disney channel one right here uh this is number three johnny tsunami yes and it's his grandfather yes which I think he's called Johnny Tsunami. Is he his, is Johnny Tsunami. His name is actual yes. Johnny Tsunami in the in the movie. Um, love his grandpa in this movie. Um, oh no! Yeah, he is like the most. And what's funny is his his Johnny Tsunami the the or uh, Johnny yeah. Capo Johnny Capahala Capahala. Yeah. Hey, um, hey bro. His, Mahala, bro. <laughs> Mahala. Dude. I have to watch. I might have to watch this again just to see. If it's it so up. good. Um, but I, I love the dynamic between uh, the grandfather and grandson because the dad is kind of more of the you know he, they move to this town. You know he's got a new job, so he's kind of like the you know the businessman dad, who you know does, he's a jerk. Yeah, he does. He probably doesn't want Johnny to, you know, uh, surf anymore or or do those kind of things. You know, he obviously wants him to be in school. And the cool thing is his grandpa is even like is way cooler than his dad. And like, I think that's been, that was such a great dynamic with those two characters and how they were um, kind of, you know, the grandpa always reminded him like, you know, almost like hang loose, you know, just like do you, you know, be you, you know, do your thing. And I always felt like that was a really, he was a really key like character, I think, um, especially like with that kind of strained relationship with his father in the movie so he really kind of brought him to like ex you know to make new friends and try out snowboarding and all that kind of stuff so yeah (laughs) johnny Um, love that love that yeah i i had to think about that top of my head because i i did look at a list of of uh like top 25 grandpas in movies and And there's not many not many many. and it didn't and that one didn't make the 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 cut so i'm really glad i thought of that one um i'm a two and then number two and one are, are probably one of my favorite uh, renditions uh, of a grand, you know, obviously a grandfather role. Uh, number two is the grandfather in Princess's Bride, or Princess Bride, sorry, um, which is played by Peter Falk. Um, the movie is such a great kind of uh, fantasy. Ro- it has all sorts of different genres. It's probably one of the, I, I feel it's one of my favorite films because it just blends yeah. some different things yeah. in there and um the obviously the story starts out with a grandfather and his grandson is sick and he's telling him a story and that turns out to be the story of what the princess bride is about and uh there's this great obviously great moments and of, of course the you know these scenes are kind of cut in between certain things but there's just great interactions with um with the grandson and the grandfather and the grandson is like, oh, I don't want to read a book about, or I don't want to listen to a story about like kissing and romance, yeah, and yeah. these kind of things. And slowly, just... stupid savage, yeah. Adam Sa- Ben Savage, Ben Savage, yeah, one ben... of the savage from uh... which one's Corey Matthews? It's his older brother. Yeah, ah, oh. yeah. I'm trying to remember. Oh, I'm trying to yeah. remember. Yeah, it's one of them. But one of them. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's such a great film, and I think as they move forward with the story, and the grandson gets like. Uh, more interested in the story you can kind of see their dynamic and you know he has this kind of respect for his grandpa and telling stories and stuff and you know i think that's also as far as even even if it was a fictional story um you know i think that's what was cool about that you know sharing something with him and um you know kind of giving him a taste of maybe even a, a precursor to to life itself and you know maybe some of those things that happen in the in the story might you know uh you know, might come up in his life when he grows older or something like that. You know, that's what I thought, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, Princess Bride. Love Princess Bride. And then, uh, let's see, number one, um, one of my favorite grandpas, Grandpa Joe, played by Jack Alverson in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yes. He he is pretty much uh, Charlie's, like, right-hand man in it. You know, he... And he, it's so great because, um, especially with the story of Charlie being from, 
you know, obviously, you know, he's from a poor family and, you know, even the thought of him going to this chocolate factory may not be a thing that he might not get because, you know, he's not uh, wealthy enough or maybe he won't have the same opportunities as people. And it's great because Grandpa Joe was that kind of anchor to him as far as like, you know, you can put your mind to things, you can do this, you know, there's, you know, what's the difference between you and some other kid uh, getting the golden ticket? And seeing, you know, meeting Willy Wonka. And of course he brings them, once he wins, he brings them on his journey to meet Willy Wonka. And it's just great interactions. And you can tell that um, maybe Charlie had a few of um, Grandpa Joe's, like maybe some of the morals and, and certain things imprinted on him. Like, you know, since uh, he lived in, kind of, I think it was like a, I think it was a single mom home. So, you know, he had his grandpa there to, you know, to kind of uh, support him and, and, you know, kind of guide him a little bit. Even though they did drink the uh, that juice in that room, the bubbly juice, and they broke some. He was rules. just trying to connect with his kid. Exactly. Yeah, so, that's all. <laughs> but I've yeah, Grandpa there. Joe. He he is probably one of my favorite characters in that movie. Um, and I don't honestly, I don't think it would have worked if they didn't have his character in the movie. I think he's just no. such a good supporting character for Charlie and his journey throughout the film, especially being kind of the adult to to be brought along and and kind of observe, observe what's going on in in the factory and and um but it's just i don't know it just they just go hand in hand together so yeah grandpa joe for number one love that good list shawnee it's a very good list was, uh, um that's the only ones i could think of at the moment but very 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 good, very good roles as far as uh the grandpa figure we we had a couple crossover. I'm not going to repeat them. I I will. I'm going to strike. Uh, it's going to kill me. I'm going to strike Princess Bride from the list. The only thing I want to say about that one is that Princess Bride, uh, to me, even though it's a grandfather, it reminds me a lot of my nan, just because that's like my introduction to storytelling was through her. Um, so, you know, this guy reading a book to, you know, I, I love that. I love that dynamic. I love that the grandfather is the one giving stories and giving birth to imagination and all that. Um, moving on. I'm, I'm, I'm striking it from my list to keep it fresh. I'm going to keep one. I'm going to keep one because it's my number one, but we're going to start at number five. Um, this was a very recent watch for me. Um, I watched Sofia Coppola's new film on the rocks okay. uh, with Rashida Jones and Bill Murray and Bill Murray plays her father. And basically the premise is she is uh, married with uh, two kids, two daughters um, to one of the Wayans brothers. And she suspects him of having an affair. And Bill Murray is her dad who is this just uh, like a dedicated bachelor, a playboy. He drives around in fancy cars. He hits on everyone, every waitress, every, you know, and, uh, but he fiercely loves his daughter and he loves his grandkids. So it becomes the two of them trying to figure out is, is the husband having an affair or not? And, uh, you know, it's, okay. it's, it's playful. It's good. But, um, and like Bill Murray is more of a father figure than he is a grandfather figure in the movie. But, you do see him interact with the grandkids and you do see his love for those kids and the love for his daughter. And it's just such a, he, he walks this tightrope of like this playboy kind of disrespectful guy, but fiercely loyal to his family. And it's, it's a very, you know, it's Bill Murray. It's going to be enjoyable. So um, yeah, his, his character's name is Felix in the movie on the rocks. I believe it's on Apple TV. It's the only thing I've had Apple TV free for a year and uh, it's the only thing I've watched. So, <laughs> uh, Number four, I'm going to go Johnny Knoxville, Bad Grandpa. Ooh. Uh, this was fun. You know, this was a fun kind of riff on the Jackass formula because uh, it was always funny when they put on the old people makeup and started like stealing things and crashing cars and things like that. Uh, but they give it a surprisingly sweet storyline, actually, um, and give it a nice through line that I was I was really like, wow, they I wasn't expecting that. Right. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I highly recommend Bad Grandpa. I haven't watched it in a long time, but uh, I remember just being kind of not blown away, but like, oh wow, this is a delightful little surprise here. Um, here we go. Bad Grandpa. Bad Grandpa. Uh, number three. Again, this is going to be one that you're not going to really think about it, um, but Don Corleone, uh, Don Vito Corleone in oh, The Godfather. Oh, I didn't even think about that. What? So there's a moment in this where, because you don't really see him, you do see him interact. His death scene is with his grandkid when, you know, they're in the garden and he's like, ah, Joey, I'm going to, you know, scare you. And the kid is spraying him with like fucking poison. And, um, but uh, the, the scene I always think of, of him as a grandfather comes long before that. It's after he first gets shot and he is in the hospital and all that stuff. And then he's coming home from the hospital and the whole family is there. And, you know, they, they have a kid that's maybe four and he's like, hey, you wrote grandpa a card, read it to him. He's like, I love you, grandpa, get well soon. Blah, blah, blah. And it's just like... Um, it's so authentically, I mean, you know, and I'm sure this is all families, but my point of reference is Italian American. It's such an Italian American like uh, scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the person in the bed uh, and all the all the family are in the bedroom and the kid with the handwritten note. It just felt so authentic to me. Um, and it's that moment where I, I believe, oh wow, this guy is their grandpa and they have a really good relationship probably you know what i mean like uh very interesting very very uh you know whatever uh number three or number two excuse me gene hackman uh as royal tenenbaum in the royal tenenbaums hey um, i haven't seen that movie in years <laughs> i haven't either but he is so good in it and it's you know that movie is about a lot of things about a lot of characters but i think ultimately it comes down to him royal becoming a good father slash grandfather mm -hmm. you know he's entering back into these people's lives because he got sick and um you know oh you know call me pappy or something like that you know and he's he's just uh what are they my cousin Mickey recites the line pretty well. He, uh, you know, you're not an asshole. You're just kind of a son of a bitch, I believe is the way he's described in that. And, you know, I loved my Nono very much. I'm wearing his bathroom. He wasn't an asshole, but he was kind of a son of a bitch. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's kind of, I kind of relate to that, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Royal Tenenbaum. Uh, it's a really, and I believe it's Gene Hackman's last role. And so, hell of a role to go out on it's pretty damn good and you son of a bitch my number one was johnny tsunami <laughs> <laughs> dude he's so that grandpa's just so chill man oh ho, ho, bono. Bono, what's up? Uh, how come you never ask <laughs> um <laughs> i so I was really, I, so during uh, last year, during my like kind of um, full on alcoholic phase, um, my, I was living in the sunset and my next door neighbors, I saw them outside. They're like, Hey man, we're having a party later. If you want to come through. And I'm not the type to just accept an invitation. I don't like people. I don't want to do that. But like, I was already drunk you know, that night when I got home and I had a 12 pack, so I was like, I'm going to go over and I'm going to, you know, I guess make friends. I never saw those people again. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I'll tell, and I'll tell you why, because I went over and, and I drank the entire 12 pack and, um, but they had Johnny Tsunami playing on the TV. It was like hey. right when Disney plus came out. Okay. <laughs> And I'm sitting there and there's all these people who I don't know. And I'm just like, yo, yo, mahalo. <laughs> mahalo, though. <laughs> just like mahalo. being obnoxious. I don't remember like how I got home that night, but I did wake up in bed, changed with my clothes folded and put away. So it's like, obviously, I wasn't too to gone, I yeah, guess. I like, you know, really I don't know. Change your clothes and fold them. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh but yeah so but that was johnny tsunami was playing and i was totally invested i was at these people's house i didn't know that i was just like but i was watching it drunk and i i thought of something that i'd never thought of before um and that is you know the father and johnny and the grandfather have such a bad relationship and it really started to make me wonder what happened you know because grandpa's a pretty free spirit and maybe maybe he couldn't uh be faithful to the dad's mom maybe you know he couldn't he just kept chasing the wave and couldn't stay at home and you know what i mean like that's my reading into it and i (laughs) i suddenly had much more empathy for the father character yeah, um, yeah. But I still love. But you're seeing the grandfather character through Johnny's, Johnny yeah. Capahala's eyes, Capahala. and that makes it all okay. Like he is fantastic, um, and you know I think that's kind of the ideal relationship every kid wants with their with their grandparent, right? Um, oh, what's that noise? That was weird. Anyway. Um, <laughs> maybe it was my chair i don't know but every kid every kid wants that relationship with their grandfather where it's like you know my nan used to always tell me like if you're ever going to run away just tell me i'll come pick you up you know don't don't be an idiot don't do that i'll i'll come pick you up if it's that bad and um that is johnny tsunami that is his grandfather you know <laughs> I think I literally he tonight, goes dude. he goes to the, to hawaii and like runs away to his grandfather like I relate to that moment so much. Um, yeah. Johnny Tsunami. Johnny Tsunami, baby. <laughs> King of the slopes, y'all. Mm-hmm. How come you never ask? Ooh, <laughs> oh, no. He's, um, the, he's the character I remember the most from that movie. Like, honestly. He's so good. He's so good in that movie. Anytime he comes in into the into a scene, you know, and it's definitely, especially when he when yeah when uh, Johnny, uh, his grandson is kind of looking for maybe some advice or you know maybe he's having a hard time in the movie. I think he always kind of comes in and and uh, you know shares his advice or talks with him. So, but I'm I, yeah I'm interested to watch, rewatch that movie because I haven't seen it in years and um, I think from that lens of you know some of the other things that might not have been talked about in the movie <laughs> be interesting to to see yeah it's um it's good it's really i th- i think it's like the only like through and through solid disney channel original movie all the oh, others yeah. kind of have their faults that would be a good top 5 ooh disney channel movies disney channel original movies original ordinary movies? kids just like you do you remember those fucking commercials <laughs> yeah dude god and the like little, actually they're not uh, just like me they're in hollywood they're making books um <laughs> they're not like me yeah i I, I, I watched uh what was it what was the one i watched because it was like halloween time i watched um oh the one where they go under the bed or they meet the boogeyman yeah i think that was oh, was, that, was that it and then i watched i, I liked that one a lot actually uh, was it phantom of the megaplex Mm, the there was that one. There was uh, was Brink. Brink Dude, was Brink a good is one. the yeah. I love still love Brink. Yeah. Luck of the Irish had a good. Ooh, one. this is gonna be a good top five. Okay, maybe we'll yeah we'll save this one for next week. We, yeah, I think that'd yeah. be it's in due time for sure. Yeah. Um, dude, I I like the list. I think that's I I'm you know what honestly I I kind of wish I put Johnny Tsunami as my number one too because I I think out of all these, I mean I love Charlie. I'll allow it. I'll allow Charlie it. and the Charlie. Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, not Charlie's. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, um, but yeah, I think uh, I'd be down to hang with uh, Johnny's uh, grandpa. I, I would, I would too. I would too. Uh, wonderful, Jonathan. Do you yes. have a list you'd like to, to yeah, race so me with? This this one is kind of uh, uh, also kind of uh, connected to my my grandpa. In a way, um, I was talking to my dad the other day, and um, you know, we we're just talking obviously about my grandpa, and you know, my dad was saying, you know, we were talking about things that my grandpa liked to do and loved, and um, he always appreciated going on holiday, which is in British terms, vacation. Um, 
and that was uh you know something that he always uh enjoyed and and of course spending time with my grandma and and family and you know i think making kind of a you know, good time with it. And I, and that got me thinking to top five for tonight. So, and we've shared a few of these, I feel. Um, so Joey, what are your top five, uh, favorite vacations you've taken? Oh boy. Um, well, sir. Um, let's see. Number five is a, is a recent one. Um, uh, me and the lady did, uh, Eugene, Oregon. It wasn't so much about being, uh, you know, in Eugene. It was just, it was a beautiful drive up. We stopped at uh, Crater Lake and um, Redding, which was terrifying. But, um, you know, Mount Shasta. um, And, you know, we're on this just bit of property that was just, you know, stretched out. And um, there's nature all around. There are big windows. stopped in a bookstore, got a book, read a book in the sunshine while drinking a beer. Like it was just the last time that I can remember really feeling relaxed and calm. And, uh, you know, so that was, that's, I would like to do that again. You know, I'd like to have, have that feeling not, not too far away. Um, but yeah, any, anytime you get me in the sunshine reading a book, that's, uh, that's you know you're I'm a pretty happy guy, you know, <laughs> and I'm not like going for my phone. Um, <laughs> number four, I'm going to go Paris. I loved Paris. I loved it. Beautiful. It felt like, um, a f- you know, a San Francisco where they don't speak English. I would say that, yeah. Was, yeah, or I mean, where they speak French, yeah. Super chill over there, I'd say. Yeah. It was great. I loved it. Um, and, you know, we really, I don't think either of us had ever been to a country where the, where English wasn't the, the the language, you know what I mean? So, and to, to kind of experience that together, I'll never forget the moment we, we got off the, train and the city just you know assault is the only word that i can think of that i felt you know it the city assaults you with its sounds its lights its noise it's it's um everything it's it's amazing it's incredible and i love it and i can't wait to get back there um and just walking around on foot and everywhere you look the architecture and everything there's history there's a story everywhere you're looking and it's it's uh it's incredible it's really great and the food oh it was bomb, dude. the food yeah. was bomb i just felt inspired the whole time i was there and that's really all i want in life is to feel inspired wherever i go so there we go, there we go. Betty. Betty, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> That's pretty weird. I did an Italian thing. Patty, yeah. yeah. Like... <laughs> Buying some right there. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> number two, um, we used to live here, so I have an affinity for this place. Um, I have been, I visited it a couple times since I've moved away. And it's, uh, I know now that it's always going to hold a very special place in my heart. And that's Monterey slash Carmel. Um, I love it down there. Uh, it's always going to feel like home to me. And uh, I don't know, like I love being, uh, the last time we stayed down there uh, about a month ago, stay on Ocean Avenue. And we were the first hotel or motel, whatever the hell it is, up from the beach. So nice. walking distance to Carmel Beach, which is just, you know, and um, that was really nice. And I, I could, you know, everything restaurant wise and coffee wise and that kind of thing is in walking distance. So it's really nice. Um, but yeah, I love visiting and kind of oh yeah, my old stomping grounds. And like, you know, uh, I was a local, like we were there for about 10 years. And um, 
it's always going to, I'm going to feel some type of ownership there, you know? So there we go. Monterey. But it's nice to visit and like as not a be able to enjoy it. You know? Yeah. And not, as not a, a, like a person, a resident living there and, you know, yeah. Yeah. It gives, you, it gives you a moment to savor, savor that, you know, as far as like, Oh yeah. And, and you, yeah, yeah, you were longer, like, you know, we both went to school out there and you were, you were there longer than, than I was there, man. So you really got someone back. Yeah. You were, you really got to soak in the city and, and explore other parts of Monterey. And yeah, I mean, as students, you don't really, you know, maybe every once in a while you'll go to Carmel or something like that, but um, living there, you know, it was like, oh, wow, Pacific Grove and Carmel. And like, you really kind of, there's not many places to learn, you know, so you learn all of it. And, um, you know, it really is a small town. You know, you run into people. Like the last time I was there, uh, <laughs> checking out of the, the hotel. And it was this woman that I would, I've, you know, I knew her from my time at Pete's. And we'd see, oh, crazy. What? you know, each other down at the bars and that kind of thing. And I'm checking out and she looks at me and she goes, I go, hey, blah, 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 right? And she goes, yeah. I was like, Joey, Pete's, I don't know if you remember. She goes, yeah. Did you get divorced? I go, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that conversation starter right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she goes, that's so sad. I'm so sorry. I go, no, nah, it's cool. We're, we're living our best life, but it's it's all good. Thank you. Okay, here's my key. Um <laughs> Bad. pretty funny Fun. pretty funny um but yeah all right carmel good times i love it um number two of course is going to be england um i've been there three times now how you've been there what five six seven times yeah so i can't i can't even i think i've lost yeah. count um I was there early on in my life when I was I was yeah. I was christened in England. Actually. I thought you were gonna say crippled. I'd be like, wow, you got better. Crippled in England. Yeah, mm. I was christened in England, so I think that was my first official trip there as a baby. But yeah, I've been a few times, and Joy and I have gone. Our we've b both been together too, which has been Twice. probably the best times, dude. <laughs> yeah, that was. I mean, technically, if you count, we were in Mexico for about an hour one mission trip where we got to go to the flea market and buy a guitar. But really our trip to England was really my first international experience. And, um, you know, it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful trip and it was wonderful. I'll never forget it. Um, but we, you know, we're kind of, and I don't mean this in any negative way whatsoever, but we were kind of chaperoned the whole time, you know, with your grandparents, with your uncle, um, and so this last time was just, all right, we're in a foreign country. We're adults. <laughs> let's book some tickets. <laughs> let's, let's do some stuff. Um, you know, and, uh, and we just, we just drank a lot of beer and it was really nice. And um, I, I want to go back to England just for the pints, the pints in England. They, they serve them in these, in these tall skinny glasses and they go down so fucking smooth and they're cold. Oh man, there's nothing like an English pint of lager. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, I think about, I like I, when I, my phone brings up pictures from our trip and I see those giant pints in my hand, I'm just like, mm. Mm. <laughs> that would make the day better. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. pints and pints and pubs too i think pubs pints is like a and totally pubs. different thing right yeah you get some um, chips get some chips which are fries um so homely like such a home you feel like you're in someone's home exactly it's really exactly interesting, right? yeah oh put another log on the fire dear yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> you know it really does it feels that way um yeah and usually but it's like I think family you're... owned, right? Like the usually, yeah. The people who own it, like have maybe it was in their family for generations. Family or... owned since fourteen sixty two, right? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Huh? I love that. Uh... 
Does your dad ever go fucking Joey and his goddamn accent? <laughs> I don't know. Do I offend I any know. of your family? I don't mean to. No. I'm just curious. <laughs> um, what the fuck was that? You spent enough time. We haven't talked like that because it's a it's a Michael Caine hybrid. Really, it's a dirty Michael it's, Caine. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mikey Caine, Not um, y'all. with a K. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's so stupid. Um, number one is uh, where. You know, my family vacation every summer. I've, you know, brought you there. Um, there was a lake, a private lake, and a cabin, and uh, it was Twain Heart. And that's still kind of my ideal of what, um, how I want to be able to relax is nature, a cabin, leather chair to sit in and read, a deck, you know, go swimming in the lake. Um, you know, that's, that is, you know, it's just, there's something about being in nature. Yes, it's terrifying because everything around you is alive and hiding. Um, but there's something like the world, you can feel it breathing around you. And you, if you can tune into that and kind of, you know, be a part of that, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's a beautiful way of life, really, except for the meth. Um <laughs> Which, but you only do that if you're a local. Yeah, <laughs> that's insane. It's like, were you doing so, meth, Joey? <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, I was at Walmart. And I was like, I bet I could get some fucking meth if I wanted for, yeah, to. Yeah, from someone over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. But that's where we went every summer, and it's still, uh, you know, I haven't been in years. Um, but I, I, yeah, that drive up to Sonora, Twain Heart is really. Uh, it was a nice, like I, I I didn't drive up there by my by myself, but like it was always like my dad or driving or something like that. But it, you know, we did it so many times that like I I kind of know that drive anyway. Yeah. And it's uh, you know, you get to those windmills and it's you're halfway there and you're like fuck I'm only halfway there, <laughs> but it's pretty good. Nice. Dude. Anyway. Yeah, that's my five, Jonathan. I'm very, uh, very curious. Uh, yeah. To hear yours. Um, I have, uh, I have a few. Um, five. Um, number five. You have a few fives. Number five, favorite vacation spot. Um, this is uh kind of connected to my grandpa as well. Did go to um, Yosemite. Uh, I'm trying to remember what year it was. Probably a few years ago. Uh, maybe the last time they were able to come over here. Um, yeah, we took a trip up to Yosemite. Just my my family, my brother, dad, my mom, and my grandparents. And it was just so much fun. And, of course, kind of similar to Russian River, like when you're in just like nature and stuff and, you know, everything's just – there's no there's no other like things to distract you. And you just can just sit at all and just look at how, you know, how amazing nature is and how – mother earth is you know what i mean um i remember like driving up like one of the mountains and like halfway up through this drive there's like snow that just appears and like we got out and we were just kind of playing in the snow and it was uh such a great you know time just to kind of get outside and and uh you know just have some fun a little bit and you know we went we saw half dome so we took like a few photos and seeing all the like crazy people climbing up half dome and you know camping out on there or something like that it's it's pretty insane when you see it like that thing is like i i, I can't imagine like sleeping because i heard people sometimes camp and like sleep at on the cliff of half dome white people insane. yeah <laughs> but uh yeah it, it's one that kind of lives uh with uh, a memory of like my grandparents especially my grandpa and being able to take like a trip like that with them uh, probably one of their last trips uh, over here in, in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, uh, freaking Yosemite for five. Love it. Number four. This one's kind of related to our time in Monterey. Uh, spring break was usually a thing for us. <laughs> and uh, we took, uh, well, my roommate, Miles Stewart. Um, hope you're doing okay, Miles, if you're ever watching any of these. Um, yeah, we used to get, we used to get hooked up, uh, my, my roommate, 
ex roommate was from South Tahoe, and um, yeah, his like mom owned like a vacation rental agency of some sort, and so we were able to like go there for spring break. Uh, so we had like a week off, and we were students; we had nothing else to do. Um, yeah, and we would just go and get like a, a nice little house or condo or whatever for super, for super cheap. So, <laughs> and he usually had a hot tub, which was really nice. Um, but yeah, man, we, we we I don't know. We made that trip. I don't know how many times, it. like two or three times or something like that within like. Um, I just remember twice. Twice, I think twice. I th I think I probably we've, made. Well, we've been up there more, but for spring break specifically, I think for spring twice. break specific, yeah, twice. Yeah. Um, yeah, and both places we stayed in were phenomenal places. I mean, they just that second place was really. Dude, yeah, it had like. I mean, the yeah, big they glass. both were. They both were, but front window looking over to like just nature and just just snow as far as snow. yeah you could see we really we were kind of snowed in that whole trip we couldn't really do much but it was it yeah. was great we we brought we were all really into black ops at that point oh yeah so we all we brought <laughs> we brought three tvs and three playstations so that we could all have like a land party while online that shit was that was crazy crazy bro um i remember the icicles that were just like yay big uh in front of the house that threatened to murder anyone that walked under them yeah. <laughs> and Insane. then i remember uh because i think nick reeves my roommate came with us on that trip i think he did right I believe um, so yeah i remember yeah i remember just chilling with him and you know i i think some of the houses in the area that we were staying at were also vacation houses so they were vacant um some of them so i remember trying to like i remember this huge pile of snow and then it, it was like a pile of snow and then the balcony of this house and i was i remember like t talking to nick like yo i wonder if we could like climb up this thing and get up to this <laughs> the balcony with the snow but of course you know the, once we got in like the snow was just so padded and you know kind of it was thick but like definitely we started shrinking and falling ever so slowly but it was it was nice i mean um I, previously when you know, I think when I, I think even maybe the first year I met Miles, you know, I think he did take me to Tahoe and we, you know, we had like a roommate trip like that. And um, I think we went in the, like the summertime. And so, uh, you know, I, I've been to Tahoe when it was snowing, but I don't think I've stayed there long enough to like kind of experience it. And um, it's, you know, it's beautiful in the, in the summer with the lake and everything. And, you know, it's a little bit warmer, but I, it was something different about it. I just really liked the snow and just kind of experiencing that. You know, I, I remember building a snowman at one point, <laughs> like doing like the cheesy stuff, like snow angel. You know what I mean? Because we just we're not we're snow we never really angel, grew up in that kind of snow that kind angel. of lifestyle, I guess, or you know that kind of environment. So it was really interesting and a lot of fun. So um, Tahoe for number four. I love it. Uh, number three. This one was a, uh, uh, I guess, kind of goes off our England trip in two thousand eight. Joey and I went to uh, England around that time and uh we went to liverpool which was super cool liverpool uh, we did the beatles experience which was awesome my uncle sean and aunt joanne uh <laughs> took us there which was awesome they were kind enough to take us and and bring us to uh to experience the beatles and we went to strawberry fields um forever where, forever where was it john where john was it where john lennon grew up or I'm trying to remember yeah, right. I mean, it was all it was all kind of right there. It was it was by Penny Lane, if I don't if I remember correctly. But um, yeah, I want to say was it was Strawberry Fields like an orphanage or something like that? And they yeah. they closed it, and there's all this graffiti all over the uh, the gate yeah, it was and everything. Very interesting. And I remember there was like a quote that someone put up, like uh, something to do with like uh, followers that go to this sacred place. Um, you know defile it defi or... yeah something to do with like you know uh it's a it's interesting how people put the graffiti up and all that kind of stuff even though it's a it's kind of a sacred place for for the beatles and you know all that so um but it, it had that really like red you know kind of strawberry red color to the to the fence the uh, fencing over there and um yeah i i thought it was really interesting and and i remember watching um uh, was the across the universe and there was there's like a scene where um like the the main character um jude he's like reading a newspaper and it was this kind of like this really cool 
area um and of course it's kind of a seaport city in a way um but yeah this great like i'm trying to remember where we were at but it was like these kind of elegant arched buildings and there was water everywhere and um it was just really really cool and interesting and um definitely unique for i think the the you know liverpool in the area and you know joey and i us being huge beatles fans and we've talked about the beatles plenty of times on the show um it was such a cool experience to just like be in this area where you know the beatles kind of grew up and um you know kind of birthed the beatles so uh yeah yeah they recreated the the stage uh, the from cavern the club. cavern club and yeah yep. that was super cool so um, those dark clubs in hamburg you remember those Paul? <laughs> yeah. I just remember i booked them I'm the leader of the Beatles. Beatles. <laughs> so yeah, that was a lot of fun, and you know, I think uh, a little a little side trip that we took. I think when we were in, visiting England, which was really cool. So yeah. number three, um, love it. Number two, I'm gonna go with uh, my my trip to Hawaii, a family trip to Hawaii. Actually, um, this was in I'm trying to remember if it was 2012. So when we graduated. Uh, from CSU and B. Um, CSU. My grandparents did come for the uh, the graduation, and we also went to they Hawaii did. that summer, as well as in part of celebration and and obviously having you know kind of a good family vacation together. Um, it was so much fun. I mean, uh, you know, Hawaii is such a a beautiful place, and there's just this just different sense of. Um, history and elegance with it and there's just uh yeah there's just obviously a lot of history there but um kind of like how you're saying with uh um you know like russian river and uh some of the other like in oregon too as well uh being able to you just you kind of like let everything kind of disappear and and just really get engulfed in where you're at um yeah with uh yeah, the nature nice. and and all that in the ocean, obviously, um, and the motion like, of the ocean, most of the ocean, and kind of like uh, Johnny Tsunami's grandpa. Uh, you know, it's super, it's super hang loose, man. It's super, uh, it's super tasty waves, bro. Super tasty waves, dude. <laughs> so, no, just trying it, to, you know, munch on a crunchy dude. <laughs> what? If what? you guys have ever seen uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall and like the the cook guy who gives them like the i could put peanut butter's uh cups in your eggs i mean it's it's exactly like when you when you talk with locals and and people uh you know we I, we went to um uh the uh, i guess honolulu so it's like, like the capital of of hawaii um so it's a, it's a more touristy area but uh it's not like real hawaii not like real <laughs> island life you know so yeah, the island life. But I mean, that's kind of crazy. I don't think I've ever been to the Waikiki I, uh, the Waikiki outrigger. So I, I have no room to talk. <laughs> Proceed. Um, I mean, what, what was cool about that island too is like you have the very touristy areas, but when you kind of, if you are able to take a trip to the north side, that's more of the local and you know kind of local side, and you know less kind of populated beaches and you know all that kind of stuff. So. Um, and it was just, I don't know, it was just super sweet to have my grandparents there and my, my family and, you know, in celebration, obviously, uh, but also just in, you know, celebration with our family and just being able to spend some time together. And again, probably one of the last like vacations um, for my, my grandparents got coming here, um, you know, uh, before my grandpa got sick and everything, um, you know, it's just, it just becomes a little more difficult to come over with the insurance and everything. And we wanted to make that trip, you know, very lasting and, and memorable trip. And, um, yeah, uh, we had so much fun, you know, just hanging out on the beach. I remember there's a, there's this famous photo of my grandpa that I should find somewhere. Uh, but it's my grandpa and we got one of these inflatable tubes. Um, and it's, oh, it's just such a good photo of my grandpa. I mean, he's literally facing the ocean with his back. Right. And he has this tube just holding on and he just looks so like, like elegant i don't know it just looks it just looks so um what's the word i'm looking for like i don't know it's just something out of like, like in a, his element in his element dude yeah, yeah. um that's and, cool that's and very that's probably cool. the most hilarious stuff i've seen my grandparents do is try to get on on uh, floating contraptions in the ocean 
And uh, I remember helping my grandma a few times trying to get on one of the, the rafts or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, and, you know, again, seeing my grandpa, you know, you know, hanging out in the ocean and, and, you know, having some time and, you know, having dinner with them and, you know, kind of having some more time with them. So it, it was one that I can remember the most. And we, we have been to Hawaii before, but I think this is one that just kind of remained more in my memory when I think about it. So, yeah. Hawaii. Love that. Love that. And, uh, number one is the most recent trip we've taken. Oh, hold on. <laughs> uh, yeah, number one is the most recent one we've taken. Uh, I would say this is kind of... I, you said France specifically, so I, I did kind of group it all into a Euro, a Euro trip kind of thing. Wonderful. We, so, I mean, last year, Joey and I went to uh, England. Uh, we went to France, Amsterdam, and... Uh, back to France. Back to France. And then we, and then we parted ways after that. We did part ways. I hung around Paris for a couple of days solo. Oh. You went back to Manchester for a night and then yeah, back to the States, I believe. And then took the airport or took a flight back, which was actually that was kind of my first experience. I mean, I've flown on a plane alone before, but it was my first experience, especially going to England, um, like flying by my s- wait. Same, yeah. Yeah, Same. yeah. That was kind of, that was an interesting trip, and then like we met my brother. And my brother came like a few days after. That was great. We arrived and everything. Um, I mean, the one reason we we really went over was for my my grandpa uh, my grandma's birthday, um, celebration, which was a great opportunity to you know a lot of the family was going to come for this event, and we got to spend time with like my cousins and you know, see family that I haven't seen in a, in a, in a while. And it was, it was such a great night. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, it was a, such a memorable night for my grandma and, and of course getting to see my grandpa too, as well. Um, like I mentioned, uh, earlier, um, you know, just even simple, you know, just sitting in the living room, uh, in my, my grandparents recliner chairs, <laughs> funny enough, they had, rec- they're so cool. They got recliner chairs. Um, yeah, just sitting down watching the telly, as they say with my grandparents and just talking and chilling and um, you know, knowing, you know, it, it, it has been a, obviously a, a tough year for my grandpa cause he has been sick and uh, closely watched by some caretakers. And um, you know, so it was good to have that trip and, and have that in mind and, you know, spend some time with him and um, you know, not knowing when the next time we'll come over or, you know, if they'll be even able to come over here to the U S but, um, you know, I really cherish those moments and we had such a good time. And then, you know, France was man, like, I mean, you guys can listen to our podcast, uh, about our Paris, tr- France trip, because we do have a from Paris actually recording from Paris. We recorded in Paris in our Airbnb. Uh, episode 154 and 155 two-parter they're they're there they're in the vault the archives check them out yes and we did record Top it. Pod. did we record it after we did our walk through paris i think we did right we record on your last night my last night that's right yeah um i, I could just say from that trip uh i remember waking up one day one morning and we're like you know, do we want to do the touristy stuff? Do we want to do like the, the red bus kind of tour thing? Um, and we thought about it, but like, you know, we were just like, Hey, let's just grab like a coffee or something across the street. Just, yeah. And then like, it just turned into like, all right, let's just go like the next block up and like grab a beer. And it just turned into this whole adventure of just like, almost like pub crawling across Paris. Yeah, really. It was then, so good. And the great thing is there was places that you wanted to go to. Like there was the, I mean, the Shakespeare Company uh, bookstore or book, a library bookstore. Well, and on our way there, we didn't even know we were crossing the river scene, but we were crossing the fucking river scene. And then there's a sign, uh, Notre Dame Cathedral that way. Dude. And, oh, it's in the same direction of the bookstore. Cool. And we had no idea. We had no idea that we were on the canal. Um which is still just the most probably my it's favorite. amazing it's, yeah it's like if you want to get a yeah. taste of what paris is about just go down that canal and mm-hmm. you know there's uh food drinks uh food vendors or uh there's people dancing um man i mean tons it, of stuff happening 
such yeah, a lively that city. was that was it 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 checked every box, every cliche of Paris that you've ever heard about and made it not a cliche. You know what I mean? Like it was like I'm okay with this being a cliche because it's that good. It has yeah. earned that right. Um dude, you're you totally know. you're totally right, man. And I think probably the best part is when we were, you know, we got to the bookstore, we, we saw Notre Dame. Um and then we were just like, where's the Eiffel Tower from here, man? And it's like That was oh. all you, my friend. That was that was <laughs> I mean, all I, we, you. I think that's something we're like, can we do this another day kind of thing? Like, you know, our, our you know, how are we feeling? And, and like the, the sun the sun was setting, it was like so beautiful and um, you know, I remember grabbing some like pizza, I think on the way and we just grabbed some drinks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we got beers and, and big old Pepsi paper yeah. cups or Coca-Cola <laughs> paper cups. Um, yeah, dude. and just hiked along the canal. Yeah. And then we just looked it up like, uh, Eiffel tower. If you keep following this canal is just up the, up the canal. So mm -hmm. kind of made it like a mission to like, you know, before, you know, let's just do this. Like we've already walked this far. Why, why not? not why not and it was just like the perfect man just like remembering uh like as we were kind of slowly seeing the in, like the top of uh the eiffel tower kind of appear in our in our view and you could see the sun is like completely you know it's already setting and we're just thinking you know i think we were telling each other like man we're about to see this at like night with like the lights and um and then yeah and then we just like peered the corner and there it was dude and it was you know i i think Kind of like again going off the cliche thing. Like at first, at first when you're just like, oh, the Eiffel Tower. Like, is it as as grand and as uh, immaculate as as you've seen in the movies or have people describe to you? And it's it's. I feel like it was more than that. You know, more. it was so uh, so breathtaking and and just. I wasn't prepared. Was not wasn't prepared for the man. scale of how just whoa. Yeah. It, it took my breath away. It was it was so amazing, man. And um, yeah, and you know we we took a we walked a little bit more, and then we took a like an Uber back, which that was the most interesting Uber. That was ever. insane. This dude was like Jason Statham. He didn't say a word to us. He was dressed in a suit. He was driving a sweet BMW. He was playing classical music, and he was scowling and just cutting in and out of traffic. He almost hit a bite a man on a on a on a motorcycle. Um, just. It was, we were like, what the fuck well, is going on? And like, yeah. you know, whoa. Yeah, he was, whoa. I, I was a little nervous, but I was like, you know what? Maybe this guy just like knows, he just knows his stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Anyways, highlights um, from the trip. I mean, we did Paris. Um, we did a last minute trip to Amsterdam, which was crazy. Um, my insane. cousin Tom, I, I know we talked, I think we talked about Amsterdam as we were planning the trip. And then it was just like, oh man, you know, maybe Paris will just do, you know, I think we'll have enough time for Paris. Yeah. It seemed like, it seemed like a lot and it was getting, yeah. it was getting expensive and really, like, ah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. And then I had like, uh, like one of the first days I arrived, I, uh, I hung out with my cousin Tom and we had like, we went to a pub and just had like, you know, lunch and uh, you know, I I I would I talked to him about the idea of Amsterdam and how we wanted to go, and he just looked at me straight in the eye, in the face, and he was just like, "Oh yeah, you gotta go, dude." And I was like, "Okay," and I was like, "You know what? In fact," and he even said, "In fact, I'm I'm on holiday right now. I'm I'm my vacation time. I I will go with you guys, and we'll make a trip out of it." So I was like, "Okay, yeah, sure." When I talked to Joey, thank I'll, God I'll... for Tom Day. I know, thank you, Tom. Um. Yeah, that that was so funny. I, like, I just love the look on his face. He's just like, "Yeah, it's amazing. It's so much fun. You should go." And and you know what? I think that obviously that trip was so much fun and uh, you know was pretty wild. I would say, but um, I think it it really taught us something about ourselves, man. We got you know we we don't have chances to do this as much as as take a take a chance. You know, kind of ch you know just do things off the whim. And um, I felt like that was such a thing where yeah let's just do this like let's just let's, say yes let's say yeah let's just do this let's say yes yeah you know, let's look at you know we took a flight there and then my brother even even joined us too and he you know flew with tom and um so we were able to meet him over there and, and hang out for for a night and um it was pretty wild and yeah and that that was kind of it so <laughs> amsterdam lovely yes. 
Lovely. Yeah, dude. So that's yeah. my that's my top five uh, for tonight, and a lot of good memories I think shared with my grandpa in there. So yeah. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Now I'm and now I'm waiting for you know COVID. When COVID's over, you know I think Joey and I will we'll plan another trip to uh to England and uh, I'll have to do another Euro trip. If yes. we can. <laughs> and we will. And we will, dude. Um. Brilliant. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited. Jonathan, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about what else happened this past week. Yeah. Which was election 2020. Hashtag yeah, election 2020. Never felt so um, antsy. And I've never had election edge. anxiety before. Yeah. This was wild. It, it this was, was interesting. Wow. Yeah. Interesting time, right? Walk me through because we haven't talked election at all. Walk me through uh, oh, the man. last week for you and how you've been dealing with it and how did you? Am I allowed to ask? Did you vote? I okay. I did vote. Um, all right. Definitely good. did. Did you not, do mail in? I didn't. Definitely did not vote for Trump. Um, but uh, yeah, I did the I did the the mail in like drop off box voting. Um, yeah. it, which was really cool. There's a, a, I live in Alhambra. So there's a, a library, Alhambra library, and they had a little drop box. So uh, the voting was kind of interesting. So I, this year, um, I, with my roommates and my, both my roommates, uh, Amariana and Anna Maria, um, we kind of like made it like a thing, like, okay, why don't we like spend some time out of the day, like out of our evening and just sit down and like read through the propositions and kind of educate ourselves a little bit on what you know obviously what we're gonna be voting for and so we we legit just sat down and you know we we respectfully you know we respect the privacy of our voting you know as far as what we put down but you know we we sure. i think it was kind of interesting this year to like have a moment to like talk about some of those propositions and you know a lot of them are you know, some of them are local to here. And like, you know, I've been living here for a few years now. And then, you know, obviously some of the bigger props. So it was uh, definitely interesting to get educated. And, you know, it was very, I felt very important to vote this year um, because we definitely, I'm sure Joey agrees, we didn't want that, that motherfucker in, uh, as a president anymore. So I don't know, man. Um, I was pretty curious. I was pretty curious what another four years would. I don't know, man. I honestly think our country would burn. withstand. Um, but and someone like me would would say would counter that with like, but wouldn't that be a good thing? I don't know, dude. I I thought I'm about a it too. I'm a I'm a registered anarchist. Let me just put that out there. Um, I think uh, <laughs> I, you know. I, I thought about it. You know, like man, revolution, what, motherfucker. You what know what would I'm it be saying? like the next four years like that, man? And you know, I think just even this last year has been like kind of a snapshot of probably what that next four years would be like. Um, but I don't know, man. It's uh, you know, I I I know my my dad shares his passion of of hatred <laughs> towards Trump and. Um, I, you know, I think it was a very important election and, you know, no matter, you know, I mean, Biden winning, um, and, and Harris too, being the first like female, you know, colored president is, I mean, that's hit, that's history right there, dude. I mean, that's so big. And, you know, I, I may not, you know, I, obviously like politics is not my kind of strong point and, um, you know, sometimes I feel like it's too good to be true what sometimes they promise or whatever, but um, just even based off that victory speech they gave and just the, it was classy. It was very classy. And, and the tone is drastically different from how Trump has been running his presidency. And just even that alone can, can spark and change a lot. I think in, in how people are addressing some of these issues or at least talking about them. And I think that I agree. I think that's what we really needed here in America. No matter if we have a connection to the candidates or, or the president or not, or you know, we we are for everything they they do or or say. Um, I think you know, th there's got to be a lot of change that has to happen. And uh, I'm hoping you know, this next four years, there's going to be some of those you know small milestones and, and stepping stones to kind of 
you know, uh, to kind of bring those kind of things into our future. Um, but yeah, super stressful. Um, even the, like yeah. the last few nights of just the counting and stuff, which I mean, at least they counted everything and it, I feel like they're, it wasn't moving. I, know, I felt dude. like, I felt like the elections had the internet that I have where it's just like, come on, upload, upload. I feel you dude. And, and oh. you know, honestly, I, I've never talked about politics and, and voting as much as this year, especially with, you know, yeah. the people I live with and, and my coworkers and, you know, it was such a, you know, and that, and that obviously that kind of goes to show the, the voter turnout this time around too. You know, there's a lot more people voting um, because they want their, you know, they want their voices to be heard. And, um, you know, I think it's uh, as of right now, the, the results and just how it is. You know, I think it's much needed in America. Whether or not yeah. uh, we'll see if uh, Donald Trump will secede uh, is the question. And uh, hopefully, uh, maybe he will go to jail uh, because of some of the stuff he's done, uh, he which I do hope jail. happens. Let's be so. real. That's not going to happen. Uh, we do have a question in the chat. What's your opinion on the state of the Republican Party and how tied to Trump it is now? Man. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. May I? Yes. Hit it, Joey. My feeling on the Republican Party and how tied to Trump it is now. Uh, if you saw 007 Skyfall and the moment Javier Bardem's character, Silva, uh, comes on the screen, he does. it's a terrific long shot. And he starts at the back of the frame and comes up and he tell as he's walking towards James Bond, he tells the story about the rats and how they eat each other when there's no other, you know, option or whatever. I think that's the Republican Party right now. I think they're going to turn on Trump. They're going to leave him. You served a, our, your purpose. Now we're done with you. And they're going to go on. And, you know, honestly, I think it'd be the same for either party. I don't think it. I don't think it would matter. Um, I, yes, specifically for the Republican Party right now. But uh, but I'm you're you know I'm also someone who doesn't trust any politician or any political party. Um, you know, you watch CNN and Fox News, and it's the same thing, just different, different political slants. Fox News is way more in your face and way more condescending and patronizing, whereas uh, CNN is much more uh, passive aggressive. <laughs> but they're yeah. they're doing the same things, right? It's opinion. It's not really news, and that's kind of how I feel about um, the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. It's it's they're saying what they need to say to get elected. Do I believe either of them for a second? No. Do I believe that they will turn on each other in a hot minute? Absolutely. If it if it serves their need. You only go into politics for ego. You can say, you can justify it to yourself that, oh, I'm trying to help my community or do this or do that. But it's about making yourself feel pretty good and having a gold star. I'm being cynical. I'm also drunk. Don't take any of this. I mean, I, I, you know, that. I mean, you know, but you know, that's kind of how I feel about it. what we hope for with democracy is, you know, we can, well, we, we don't live in a democracy. We live yeah. in a Republic. That is, we, we, we are not the, the idea that America is a democracy is a misdemeanor. It's a lie, right? We vote for an electoral college who we have faith will vote the way that we voted. But that, that, that could also not happen. Yeah. No, it's fucked you. up. I agree. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. How we need to get super political. We never anyway, get political on the show, but we never get political. Know, um, yeah, I just, yeah. Thank you. I, uh, Abu zero 2022. Uh, thanks, yeah. Thanks man. For, thank you. Thank for you so in. much. Yeah. Um, um, I hope yeah. that answered your question, Sean. How do you feel about it? I went on. I'm kind of. A, I kind of second that it? a little bit. You know. Uh, you know. I, I guess it's also on us to like know what. 
you know what's happening with with uh you know what laws are being passed and whatnot um but i kind of feel the same way about politics and that too many laws um i do believe that um i think it's a gener obviously a generational thing you know i feel like hopefully eventually previous generation like our generation and generations before us will hopefully with the ideals of you know equality and and all these other things that should fall into place as every human being should have um i think those kind of those will definitely be more uh obviously up up you know in the forefront um and i just i'm not being ageist or bashing anyone but i just think you know i think that's why we've been stuck a lot in america um over the even decades uh because of just the same kind of the same thing all the time and you know, there's not a lot of change happening and um you know i know we have our own opinions but i mean if you don't you know i believe in science and you know there's i mean we are slowly killing mother earth and i think uh if we're not going to do anything about it then i think we'll go along uh, and die with mother earth herself but you know i think what i believe in is you know generations obviously before us um will hopefully take those ideals and those morals and um, and apply them and hopefully become leaders and and you know be part of of the the changes that can happen and um, you know with uh, using politics um, and that's that's kind of what I hope for um, it's too good to you be have true. such a nice outlook it's too good because to I'm though. like uh, you know because I'm like you know I, you're like oh I hope they take those morals and that outlook and apply them and in my mind I'm like they're gonna take those morals and outlook and use them you know what i mean yeah, I, yeah uh I that. that's that's uh, but i'm i that's why we're best friends because i'm cynical and you are hopeful and um it's it's a beautiful thing because it gives me hope um and our and our friend abu zero 20 tony 22 i keep screwing that up and i apologize my friend politics pretty much turned into the people's sport especially during quarantine so juxtaposed couldn't agree more could not agree more um how how was your how was your your voting your elect election week for you oh voting? it was stressful as hell um you know uh, there's all this talk about it's going to take a while and really it's not over yet um and anyone who, who's already celebrating i'm like uh, i would i would i would wait i would wait um, but yeah, man. So I voted probably two or three weeks ago, did my mail-in ballot, did all that. Um, and, you know, watch the debates have been watching news more than I ever have before, you know, and I watched the news a lot when Trump first got elected because it was entertaining finally, but then you were like, oh my God, this is just, this is not good for my mental health. This is terrible. Um, and yeah, watch, watch the, the, the elections. And I was up till maybe three in the morning, you know, got up for work Wednesday. I was like, I don't know how, and then it didn't move for like two days. The numbers didn't move for like two days. And, um, yeah, it was very is intense um i had lise here with me um all week long you know we were like i'd like to be with you know i think we both kind of felt like i want to be with someone during this process you know um because it is stressful it's it's um there's a lot riding on this one and um you know it it sucked. It sucked that, that we didn't get any answers. And then, um, I had my cousin Chelsea's wedding, um, her and her new husband, Jake, congratulations, um, had their wedding this weekend, socially distanced, of course, all that good stuff up in uh, Granite Bay and just got annihilated, uh, Friday night really, but never like lost my cool, but I had like counting back, I'm like, Whoa, I had a lot to drink. Um, and i wake up the next morning and i'm like i check the news okay nothing's changed okay 
um, load up the car, get a cup of coffee, go to my parents' room, just say hi, have a cup of coffee with them, and then, you know, peace out. And I'm sitting there and I update my news feed and I go, holy shit. And um, <laughs> I'm just like, when did they, they called Pennsylvania? And uh, I, you know, it was such a, it was such a nice drive back, you know, like there were, I got to Berkeley and there's that overpass before you get to the bridge and yeah. people were just hanging an American flag and, you know, uh, making noise and, and screaming. And it was just like, it felt, I haven't felt that. I mean, there was two instances I can think of right after nine 11, the country was unified. Like you wouldn't believe every house had an American flag. Everyone was like, are you okay? Are you good? You know, everyone was checking on each other. And I didn't see unity like that again until uh, election night when Obama won, I'd say. Even even people who voted against him were like, that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like, that's good. That's a good thing. Um, but that didn't last. And seeing this and then hearing a a speech that wasn't gloating that didn't, I was so afraid he was going to work. You're fired into his speech at some point. I'm so happy he didn't. Um, Cause you remember when we talked about the first debate, I was like, yeah, yeah. Everyone wants to call him a jerk. Everyone wants to say you're the worst president ever, but like you can't, you know what I mean? You got to be better than that. So I was so happy that both, Biden and Kamala were, were, were better than that and um, gave really classy kind of inspiring speeches. And I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm as cynical as they come. I have no faith in politicians, zero. I don't care what party you come from. I have zero faith in you. Um, but it was lightweight, inspiring. It was beautiful. And it was really like, you know, just looking at it as a screenwriter, as, as from, from a story perspective, Biden turns Pennsylvania blue, his home state. That's the one that seals the deal. That's a Hollywood ending right there. And if it wants to get even more Hollywood, seeing Trump come back from the golf course to loser, 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 after he calls dead soldiers, loser. That's pretty nice. Like, I don't want to gloat either, but that's kind of nice. And then the cherry on fucking top because I'd been following Twitter all day long and Trump tweets out, all right, big, big press conference at the four seasons. And then that tweet gets deleted and it's big press conference at the four seasons landscaping. And you go, wait, what did you see? Did you see this? No, I did not. What? This is why you need to fucking be on Twitter. God fucking damn it, Sean. Okay. So, (laughs) pull up google right now please pull up google right now and type in trump four seasons landscaping so trump had giuliani and his lawyers hold this press press conference in the in a parking lot of this landscaping building between um i forget oh a crematorium and a sex shop Oh, I did hear about this. You can't make this up. I did hear about this, dude. This is (laughs) fucking crazy. This is fucking crazy. What? What? Dude. Hilarious. Hilarious. There's even an interview, an article about an interview with the owner of the sex shop. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Is pretty good social distancing rules, apparently. No way. Way. What? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wild. Wild, bro. Fucking wild. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I don't know. I you know, by the time that it was finally called for Biden, one, uh, I mean, I was hungover, and I drove back from Sacramento, so I was exhausted. But I mean, really, I was it. Election week was the pulling of a rubber band, seeing how far we could fucking. Ah, you know, I was just exhausted by that point. I'm 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 fine with the outcome. You know, I don't like any, you know. Let's be real. Let's 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 not pretend like six months ago or whatever it was, like we were all kind of like, I'd prefer Bernie over Biden. You know, Biden wasn't really our choice, you know, but then he was our only option. And so it's like, oh Biden, it's like let's 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 cut the bullshit. He was never anyone's first choice. I'm happy that it's him over the other guy. But you know, it's still politicians. It's still politics. It's still the government. I don't trust it. But yes, it's a beautiful moment. I'm happy. This is good. This is a good thing. Um, if for nothing else than just the morale of our nation and pouring less gasoline on fires. Yeah. Because really, you know, I do believe there are sane people out there who vote for Trump. I believe there are people who have probably good reasons to vote for Trump. I believe on paper, Trump has probably done some good things because it's impossible for anyone to do 100% evil 100% of the time, right? Even a guy like he's... I was going to say he ain't Hitler, but then again, he did tell Proud Boys to stand back and stand by. So that argument is kind of out of the way. But I mean, I'm just saying like, you know, a fucking uh, a broken clock is right twice a day, right? You know what I'm saying? So by that logic, Trump has probably done one or two okay things for some Americans. Even the ones that probably hate him. But his attitude, his demeanor, his bullying fucking nature, the way he is on Twitter, the way he is to other people, to anyone who comes between him and his ego is fucking vile. And it's it's no longer acceptable, or at least I hope it's not. At, you know... president if nothing else because you know kids you know who the president is when you're five but you don't know what their policies are or what they stand for but you know how they address the nation you know how they speak you know how they hold the door open for their wives or something like that if you're five and you're watching trump and you're like is this what i'm supposed to act like is this what i'm supposed to be like Forget it. Forget about it. Forget it. Um, it's been a thing to wrap my head around. You know, like I, I grew up in a you know fairly conservative household, and but in San Francisco, wrap your head around that, right? So I've always had a bit more empathy for the right than a lot of other people I know. Because I, you know, I could hear their side of it and go, okay, well, that person sounds rational. I understand what they're saying. Okay. Oh, the left. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Well, hmm. okay. And I would ask my dad, you know, hey, dad, you know, um, people say that we're stupid or that we're idiots because we, because you voted for Bush or whatever. Okay. Well, son, um, Bush may not be the smartest guy, but I believe he is the better man. I believe he's a good guy. And I would rather have a person who I believe, you know, has character, who, you know, is a good person leading our country than someone who maybe is smarter, but more, you know, willing to, to cross the line. Mm -hmm. 
And by that logic, I, you know, I could justify that as a kid. You cannot use that logic when it comes to Trump. You just can't. Mm -hmm. You put him in a room with anyone else. He's not a good guy. He's not, he doesn't have anyone's interest, but his at heart. Um, you know, and people are Trump's a, Trump's a racist. He hates this. He hates that. I don't think he hates anyone. Honestly, I just think he hates anything that comes between him and himself, him and winning. Um, if he gave, you know, other people a thought, maybe he would be racist, but I don't even think he gives, gives other people the time of day. I think he's so purely egotistical. Yeah. It's, it's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Like try looking at a picture of him in profile while you're eating. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, no? I'm, glad, I'm glad he's not a president anymore, man. Honestly. Honestly, dude, I wouldn't even say that just yet. I would wait yeah. because he's got, he has a team of fucking lawyers and they're going to go. Gonna go I don't hand. think they're going to win, but they're like, if election 2016 taught us anything, it's don't jump the gun. Just wait and see and hope uh and vote and it appears that we all did so cheers to that man cheers cheers Ooh. got to the bottom of that one Ooh. love that so election Woo. election 2020 yeah. um yeah we don't usually get too political on the show but you know what yeah guys this is this is historic this is truly uh this is truly historic um and and hats off to you know kamala harris and and just like how it's it's pretty beautiful biden if nothing else is a bridge right he was vice president to our first african-american president and now he's president to our first uh african-american asian american uh uh, uh vice, vice president. president it's it's female vice president wow. amazing beautiful great even if you don't like them even if you know you hate everything they, they you can't hate what they represent which is progress in that regard you have to respect and, and appreciate that you have yeah. to i agree man that's i think that's uh and maybe maybe that might be kind of the feeling i got too is just like pro you know like so you know we're gonna have at least something some sort of progress and just imagining I mean, with like Trump leaving like the Paris, was it the Paris Accords or whatever? Like the Paris Accords, dude. Like, we're the only ones out of that right now, uh, as of like I think last week or something. And like, yeah, it's just yeah, this it blows my mind. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can, and it makes me think. You know, it's still as we get older, Joey. Like, it makes you think. Like, you know, how's our how's the United States gonna be like? when we're you know the next 10 years and you know if we ever have kids someday you know how's that going to be um you know with our kids and like how's the world going to be how's the united states gonna be like that so yeah um abu 022 i mean that's probably the best thing from his presidency he ruined the mold of a president so much that they were willing to elect a female vp when they picked trump for the sole reason his opponent was female yeah, good I point. mean, it's good. Point. Let's let's not forget that McCain uh, did choose Sarah Palin as a running mate back in 08. And I think she was the first female VP running mate. That choice felt more, if not just as cynical as, as this one. Um, but, you know, it was definitely a cynical kind of uh, last breath attempt by McCain to, to go up against Obama didn't work. Um, this obviously is much more historic and much more crazy, but uh, this wasn't the first time it was, it was attempted. 
Let's not forget that. Right. And now and um, that's uh, reality, which is, I mean, beautiful. That's yeah. That's that's. Amazing. Hopefully, it's good. Hopefully, it's a good thing. You know, I yeah. you know, I don't know. Uh, you know me, I'm optimistic. I hope I I hope good stuff comes out of these next four years. But you know, it's progress. I don't think everything can be solved in four. You know, it, it's what the groundwork they lay and the and the specific things they'll do that will set up future generations. Obviously, in the next you know next term of president. So. Because let's 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 think of it, you know, from the flip side, people who voted for Trump saw that as progress. And now Biden's already said he's going to use his executive orders to undo Trump's executive orders. So that's why progress is, you know, one foot forward, three feet back or whatever the hell it is. You know what I mean? Like that's you can see why in real time why this shit takes forever and it's awful because you're fucking with people's lives. You're, you're, you know, you ever read in the history books like, Oh, this person was killed because of this reason. And you're like, that is so incidental. That would never happen to me. They didn't need to die. What? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I just wonder how much of that shit are we going to read about 50 years from now and be like, fuck, really? Floyd, George Floyd. Fuck. That would never happen today. You know, I can't, I mean, I can't wait till we get to that point where that would never happen today, but fuck. It's going to take a long time for that. It's going to take a long time. But uh, God, I've got faith. We'll see. We'll hopefully see, man. And that's, well, you and know, that's all you, all, you, know. you and Wham, you and Wham, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and that's all, that's on, you know, that's on us too, you know, again, kind of going back, you know, when we have kids and kind of the, the things we uh, talk, you know, talk to our kids about and still in them. And, you know, especially when it comes to like stuff about, you know, racism and, and those things that I guess Trump in, in a way became a representative of that figure. Um, so, you know, I think it's, uh, but you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different issues that, you know, Joey and I probably don't even know about that are happening. In, in, oh yeah. You know, so I, I feel like politics are like, to me, they're like 90s X-Men, X-Men comics. There's so many of them. There's so many convoluted backstories. You, there's no way. There's no way you can keep up with all of it. Um, what pisses me off most about politics is like, oh, you're voting for that guy. You know how you voted in 1983 about this one measure that's super obscure that you've never heard about? I probably disagree with it. Tell me. You know what I mean? Like, fuck. Um, you... you you can't trust a career politician. Let's be real. You can't trust anyone that wants to be president. What the fuck kind of fucked up person are you? Yeah. Anyway. Job real. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. I had a final thought about politics and things, but it's left me. <laughs> it's all good. It's so all good. Leave it. Um, um, Shall we segue yeah. into the next, uh, into our Let's last? segue. Let's segue. Jonathan, do you have anything uh, that you'd like to share with our dear, sweet, lovely, imaginary audience? Although it appears that we don't have quite the imaginary audience thanks to Twitch. Thank you guys for showing up. We've got <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven people in the chat right now. Say thanks, hello yeah. if, you, if you're so inclined. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Uh, we switched our formats. We're doing live shows now, so we appreciate you guys watching. Or at least drop wild. In. We're so uh, wild. Well, um, uh, I guess still on a personal note, I would like to just say thank you to anyone who's reached out uh, to my family and to myself uh, about my grandpa, my grandpa passing uh, last week. Uh, it really means a lot. And, you know, I've had a lot of messages from family and over in England from, you know, friends and, and people I know. It's, you know, up north in San Francisco, and um, it just really means a lot, I think, to my family, and obviously sharing memories of my grandpa. Um, so, you know, uh, I feel, uh, again, very grateful that I was able to have him come here and visit almost every, almost every year of my life, I feel. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it they were able to meet a lot of my friends, you know, have a good, you know, family relationship with Joey and... Um, you know, I think it's uh, they, they've been able to 
you know, obviously meet and and uh, influence a lot. Uh, you know, have a lot of influence on on a lot of the people that are in my life and and outside of that. So, um, you know, I just want to thank anyone who's reached out and um, yeah. And then my second thing I'm going to share tonight is uh, start watching a new show. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. It's called Truth Seekers, which is written by Simon Pegg and uh, I think Nick Frost as well. But it does star Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Um, Love that the dynamic duo. They are actually not a dynamic duo in this mo- in this show. Um, it's mostly I would say the main character is Nick Frost's character, and nice. it's 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 funny. I, it's got a little bit of like the kind of Simon Pegg like that kind of humor in there. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's an, you know, eight episode first season, you know, uh, story arc and uh, Nick Frost plays a IT kind of like, uh, IT, uh, on the road kind of guy who gets hired, you know, by this company, like fix people's internet connections and stuff. And then as he does that, um, his side gig, which is kind of his main gig is he's a, he's like a paranormal investigator. Um, so it's it's yeah it's super fun and and uh you know it's a good watch and it weirdly reminds me a little bit of um like twilight zone slash like doctor who because some of the episodes they just kind of go in that weird area it's not necessarily like um i mean there's a little bit of like shock horror or like you know kind of like um jump scares and stuff like that but it's it's more i think it's more past that like uh like just strictly like paranormal horror. I think it's like a little bit of like sci-fi elements. Um, like, yeah, it's just, it, it's like a, a whole different beast of like paranormal activity kind of stuff. So, um, Hey buddy. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been watching. I've got like, I don't know, two more episodes out of the eight left. And, uh, I don't know. It's just kind of nice to see like Nick Frost and Simon Pegg in a thing again. And, um, and it's just a different kind of show. I've been watching like very serious shows uh, or I saw like Lovecraft country. It was the last show I watched. and It was very like intense and stuff. So um, it was cool to watch something just a little more kind of loose and, you know, funny and also kind of on your edge a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, that's kind of what I've been, what I've been wanting to share this week. So is, is Edgar Wright involved in it at all? I don't think he is. Um, okay. There are funny enough. There are some shots. They don't do it too much, but there are some. Excuse me. There are some shots of uh, where the very Edgar Wright like quick, fast like transition where it's Whip like a very, and... it's like a very simple thing that's happening in the scene, but they make it very elaborate. Like there's a few of those in there, um, and I think that's just kind of like stylistically what they like to do. Um, that's cool. I gotta do. I, I know Simon Pegg it has he's written some of the episodes too so i i know it's i nice. think maybe this is his like project and um as a show i think there's a, i think a different directors each episode but i wouldn't be surprised if they like consulted with edgar wright to some degree or like had him produce it or something like that so um but yeah i think it's it's fun it's a, it's a fun i don't think it's like the best show i you know there's a few th- it, it it's very it's very uh self-contained for per episode and um it kind of gets straight to what the thing is for the episode i would say you know there's a few things of like and then and there's two su- other supporting characters you kind of meet um who are these uh young actors and uh um part partly one of the actors um is like the the new hire at had his job and then he ends up becoming like his you know his uh like mentor figure like and he's like oh yeah this is what this is also what i do outside of this job and then they kind of get ringed up into this paranormal uh hunting or whatever so but yeah that's pretty much nice. what i got to share this week and uh, Love it. i'm probably gonna watch giant tsunami tonight and watch an episode of that so um but yeah Love Any, that. joey anything you want to share tonight yeah um tomorrow at seven 7.30. I'm going to be appearing on a primetime Travity show. Hey. Um, part of the uh, T13 media, the the debatable podcast. Yeah. Um, and be talking, I guess, about writing and, and things like that, and screenwriting. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, please tune in. Please join. Um, I'm, I'm excited. 
I, I haven't done a show. Well, I've done the three friends, but Nikki's my cousin and Alberto's my cousin. So, you know, it's, it, you know, but I haven't done one, you know, kind of without a safety net of like you or, or anything like that. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little nerve. I've got the, you'll I got be, the nerves you'll going. Fine. You'll be fine. Well, yeah, of course it'll be fine. Cause you know, I'd be fine, <laughs> but, um, there we go. So I'm excited. So tune into that. And, um, that's, that's all I got. Once again, um, uh, congratulations to my, my cousin Chelsea and, and her new husband, Jake. Welcome to the family, sir. And um, yeah, check out uh, Primetime Travi T and T13 and Debatable T13 on Twitter. There you go. I got I to gotta catch more of their shows, their live streams. Like, uh, yeah. I, I dropped in on their, I think, last last week's stream or nice yeah last last week's stream um and they were super cool to us when we when we appeared on there and um they celebrated their they were uh, great. their 100th right 100th episode yeah yeah um, which yeah. is super cool good milestone very excited for them yeah and they're, they're just fun to watch so yeah i'm gonna try to jump you know jump on and, and, and watch more of their streams and um you know we really appreciate those guys for, for having us on so absolutely cool um Jonathan, where can we find more of your work on the internet this week uh find me on instagram at sean day music and on my website sean day music dot net dun, net dun, dun, uh, dun. Dun, dun, dun. joey where can we dun, find dun, dun. you on the internet you can check me out on twitter at joey Prati and on my website joeypratiscripts.com you can check out the show at Top 5 Pod. It's T-O-P-F-I-V-E 5 P-O-D on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube at gmail.com, and on Facebook at Top 5 Podcast. We are on Apple Music, Google Play, and SoundCloud. So please give us a like, give us a listen, give us a follow, give us your love, and we will give you all the good jolly old love in return. All the good old jolly old love in return. Until next time, Jonathan, I am Joey Prod. And I'm Sean Day. Cats joining along. Bye, guys.